Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today to look at the Pied Piper, a game by Agnes Largo for two to five players, ages eight and up, that plays about 20 minutes or so. And it's co-published by Purple Rain Creations and Yellow, with this being title number six in the Tales and Games series, in which children's stories or fairy tales have been transformed into games and packaged in a box that looks like a book. How does this one work? Here are the components for the Pied Piper, set up for a five player game, with each player having a house, as well as a rat tracker. You have a rat between each pair of houses, with the starting player having two rats and the Pied Piper to their left. If you had fewer people, you'd remove a house, you remove a tracker, you remove a rat, as well as the three rat cards from the figure deck. Okay. Once you've set up the deck and the components in the right order, you shuffle everything and deal four figure cards face up onto the table. You also deal four action cards to each player with this showing the six type of action cards that are in the deck. The first player is going to play a single card onto one of the figures and then draw a replacement from the deck. Each other player, now taking turns in counterclockwise order, is going to play two cards onto two different figures, resolve any of those figures if needed, and then refill their hand of four cards. And what do the cards do? Well. They move the characters in different ways depending on the arrows that are shown on them. So if a figure has two cards on it, then that figure will move. In this case, the green rat, or the rat with the green tail, moves once in the direction of the red arrow through this guy's house. And that is the heart of the game because you are trying to drive rats through the other people's houses in order to raise the rat tracker in, in their house. Okay, the rat passes through, it goes up. The green arrow now moves him through the sewer this direction, and if he moves through the sewer, then he does not raise the tracker. All right. You then throw away those cards, you turn up a new character card, the player refills their hand of four cards, and they go again. So each time a rat goes through a house, the tracker goes up one. If the Pied Piper goes through a house, the level goes down one. All right, very simple and straightforward, but there are way more rats than pipers. So the tendency of the game is to escalate everything. And if a rat tracker hits the roof, then that player is out of the game. And everything in between those houses is now consolidated into one area. What are the other cards for? Well, the musical note will move everyone that is in the same space as that figure. So here the Pied Paper is gonna move two spaces in the direction of the green arrow, but the musical note is gonna take everyone with it. And if it takes these rats with it, well, the rat tracker is going up two and then down one, so it goes up one, it goes up again. And now here's everybody all piled up together. This goes away, turn up a new character. If we end up having another musical note with the purple one, well now the tracker is going up two each level. All right, so you try to cluster these together, or ideally if you're this guy, you're gonna be putting a sewer here and then possibly a musical note and drag everyone through and just set every, all the rats on the next guy. The plus one simply adds one to whatever the movement is showing on that current space. So if you had plus one on a green arrow, well then that blue rat would go two. If you had plus one on a sewer, then this guy goes through the sewer twice. All right, very straightforward. If you had two special cards together, then this is just thrown away, and hopefully some rat comes up that will not hurt you. Now, when someone's rat tracker gets up to the roof, they're out of the game. The player who caused them to go out keeps their tracker as a tiebreaker. You consolidate down, and you keep playing. And you keep playing until there are only two players left in the game. And as soon as that happens, the game ends instantly, and whoever has the lower rat tracker wins. And that's it for the Pied Piper, which I played three times now on a press copy from Yellow, once each with three, four, and five players to try different player counts, different playing experiences. I haven't tried the two-player game in which each player has a house that's opposite each other, and you have a couple of other houses as buffers to divide the area into sort of four playing quadrants, and you're just trying to drive the other player out of town first so that you can have this giant rat-infested town to yourself. Victory! Now, the Pied Piper is kind of a mean game in that, yes, you are trying to drive people out of town. 
and with five people and four people, you know, you can drive them out, collect the rat trekker, and then you just keep going. And they're just gonna watch from afar with the rats nibbling on their faces. And you get down to three people, and it gets a little, you know, a little different then, because of course with three people, if that third person whose tracker is up the highest goes out, then the first player wins. So the second and third start teaming up against the first, try to direct everything to him through the sewer everywhere else and drive the piper away and so on and so forth. And you're restricted in which cards you have in your hand and which figure cards come up. So it's not always possible to target people the way that you want to target them, right? And you can't make a salad if all you got is beans, but you do the best you can, and you just try to make sure that you are at the bottom, right? Redirecting people the whole time, kind of weighing liar's dice. You just want to like move that bit along and hope that someone else gets called or has to do the calling. You don't want to be on the hook when that happens, right? You just direct attention away from you and hope to stay low. You can try to do that as long as you can, but again, you're limited in terms of what comes up in your hand and the figures. You got a little bit of fiddliness just with moving stuff around the table. You're gonna be playing two cards each turn. As soon as a figure gets two cards, you gotta clear them off and move the figure and turn up a new figure and then draw two cards again. There's a lot of little cards moving around, especially in my group, because I seem to be the only one who's actually doing that type of stuff. Again, I'm a take charge guy, I guess, in terms of doing that. Uh, the box works like many of the Tales and Games. It's got a little player set up here. It's got a story of the Pied Paper. You have little rat cubicles down at the bottom. Oh, things fall out if you tilt it this way. But it does have a magnetic clasp, so it holds together as long as you don't touch it, right? Just don't turn it sideways when you got this open. One problem with the box, though, and I expect fire and brimstone, about this from some people is that it lacks the Roman numeral six on the side, so it will not line up nicely with all your other Tales and Game series. Someone should make a sticker immediately. Other people will not care, but some people will, and others won't. Such is life. There you go, Pied Piper.